Writing character interactions is one of my favorite things. It's really satisfying to test different personalities against one another and kind of just see how they react. But I've gotten some questions on how to do this, and in particular how to write scenes that center around character interactions. So that's what I'm going to talk about today, and after that I'm going to talk about the lovely art that is being drawn here and the, the characters therein. So, the part about structuring a scene, it's a lot easier for me to talk about. The actual interaction between the characters, however, that's kind of a lot harder to pinpoint. If, if you need help doing that, I'd first look into the aspect of chemistry. I talked about chemistry earlier, um, I'll link that here. Hopefully, I remember to do that. And I'm not going to kind of go in depth with how to create chemistry in here because it would take up a lot of time. So what character interactions come down to is personalities um, and personalities that mesh well. Your first job is to make situations where the most interesting character combinations are put together. This works a lot easier if your characters have some degree of chemistry. The more characters that react well, and by that I mean like characters that are interesting together, not characters that get along, they can hate each other, that's fine, that's still interesting and fun. But the, the point is, um, the more potential characters you have that can interact with each other, the easier you'll find making situations is. So you gotta work on an overall chemistry between all of your characters so you can have a lot of fun interactions. And honestly, sometimes when I find a character who only works with a few characters, it's usually time to just cut or rework the character entirely rather than fixate on the specific scene that there is an issue. Especially if they, they continually have issues in scenes with character interact. That's a deeply rooted character problem you have to deal with, okay? Either way, the groundwork for any good interaction is chemistry, and if it's missing, that's what you need to fix first. Um, this is sort of why I like role-playing with Ursula, since it's really easy to test the chemistry of characters. It's it's so simple to, um, to tell whether characters are working well together, since the ones that don't work well together, they kind of fade into the background. They're a lot they're not interesting to RP. And that's where I can see like, oh, this character really doesn't fit in with this story. And I might put them in another story where they fit in better. Or I might just get rid of them entirely. Screw you, character. But once you have chemistry, like, then what do we do? Uh, because the ease of interaction really only adds flavor to the work. And by all means, flavor is very important. You know, it's entertaining. It's it's um it's a story. Flavor is a, a large part of it. However, the flavor contributes kind of minu minimally to the the movement of the story. In a role play, that's perfectly fine to do. But in a comic where we want to build forward momentum, um, the movement of the story is important, which is why it is an aspect of character interaction we need to look at. And if the interaction is focus, and in, if the interaction is the focus of the scene. Even more so. That means that that is the center of the conflict or the center of the um, re resolution in in more chill kind of um, in scene sequel type scenes. That that's a whole other topic. Let's just focus on conflict here. So in an earlier video, I brought up the point that conflict usually boils down to person A wants something, but B is in the way. In in the case of character interaction. The B is another character in the scene or another group of characters. So some examples are Janet wants her slippers, but Helen has taken them. Henry wants to propose to John, but John's not interested in going out tonight. Jem wants to murder Hugh, but Hugh won't let him. You know, these are all character conflicts. And when you build an interaction around a simple conflict like that, it then boils down to the plot 101 graph. And I will leave a link here right now to the plot 101 graph because that is a very long video. And it is definitely something you, you would want to look into the nitty gritty of. Because once you have defined your conflict, then it moves very much like any other conflict. Even if it's just within a scene, that's how it works. There's other types of scenes that don't revolve around conflict. Maybe I'll talk about them another time. 
but they basically boil down to like chemistry and there's still a certain purpose of the scene that needs to be fulfilled whether it's like reconciliation or something similar and a lot of it can also be applied in a sort of conflict manner where the one character wants to resolve what just happened while another character is kind of getting in the way of that or wants them to solve it for themselves you you just need to define the define the conflict of the scene if there is any and if there isn't any you need to justify why there is not a scene conflict which is perfectly acceptable to do you just need to pay attention i definitely pay attention to it later on in my second drafts, when I'm writing a first draft, a lot of it is just character interaction. But when I go back, I look at scenes and scenes that feel vague are usually ones that I haven't defined the objective or conflict, whatever. I haven't thought about it. It's usually just a scene with a lot of fun character interaction, but no direction. And a lot of times, as soon as you add the direction, a lot of it you can still keep because you know, interaction has a bit of interplay already, and you just got to work with it. Yeah. And for the most part, that is how I do it. As a character building tool, I find that first drafts and just letting characters interact is perfectly fine to do. And I don't really worry too, well, I try not to worry too much about the perfect conflict. Um, sometimes the act of characters just talking is exactly what you need to do just to like solidify their personalities and explore them. And you can explore them on the page and then cut it out later and bring it back when you better understand your character and can more easily portray them with like just kind of like short interactions. Hope that makes sense. Um, I guess that means we get to move on to, um, what is being drawn here. So the characters here are Ficus and Cedar, and they are from the Save Dad from Fairies RP. And the Save Dad from Fairy RP was mentioned yesterday by Ursula in her Dahlia Raven one, and now I think we can finally get into like all the nitty gritties of it. So like Ursula said, there are four kingdoms in the fairy world. There's the Fauna Kingdom, Flora Kingdom, Fungi Kingdom, and the Kingdom of Pestilence. And those names are all based on the um, the kingdoms of the phylogenetic tree. Pestilence is like a combination of the two uh, bacteria kingdoms and Pro Protista, um, because like, you know, they're all kind of similar in, in, a, in a magical kind of context. It's easier to lump them together than build a magic system based on like bacteria versus protists. You know, there's, there's there's not like a lot of fun. Okay, there's lots of fun stuff, but it's easier to group them together. Um, so I think to best describe these two characters, I kind of have to get into how the magic system works, like how the fairy world functions. Like, so the fairy world in this world, there is is like Ursula said, there's like this very strong gender binary that is a thing, and it's very heteronormative, you know, it's it's all heteros. And the reason for that is like kind of similar to humans, but like also not. So like in order to have children, you need a man and a woman. And and it's not because they they mate like animals, like gross human animals mate. No, it's like their hearts can only fuse with like a male's heart can only fuse with a female's heart. A uh, female can only fuse with the male. And the reason for that is because there's a lot of courtship rituals and performing these rituals correctly is how you get your hearts to fuse. So you can't fuse your heart with a girl because that's not how it works. So the way that you have children as a fairy is to reach different milestones in your life. Like if you build, like getting married is your very first milestone and it's when your hearts fuse. So you become married and then a child is born of that and then other um, milestones in your life will like create more children. So like when you get your first house together or when you like celebrate your first solstice together type things like they're very like they're, they're like couple milestones that happen and that's how you have kids and that's what fairies like to do and you don't really need to hang out with your wife tons they're not like super cuddly lovey creatures they are fine with just their hearts being merged 
and that's that's all they need for love. And and the way that you like court a lady, and it's always the men who have to court the ladies. That is that is part of the rules. Um, when you court a lady, you have to court her in her very specific chosen way. And if she says yes to you, then you fall in love and then you can like have your life together. If you're trying to date a mermaid lady, you have to find your way to the the bottom of the ocean where she lives and deliver a flower to her underwater home, you know? Like it's it's very specific things. Unless she is a lady of the court, in which case you would court her as if she was one of your own species. And the babies end up being the same species as the father, but they need to be courted by the mother's chosen way, is basically how all of that works. Okay, so that is all the groundwork there. I'm sure there's more. Um, Ficus is a lady of the court, which means she is the daughter of of the king of flora um which means like she has lots of like work to do um managing the courts and talking with different kingdoms and such uh she's just a very busy lady um and, and most of the children of the king and queen are always ladies uh a male born from the king is very rare we'll get into that later and so, yeah, she is a lady of the court. And one day, um, her sister was being courted by a goblin, a goblin from the Pestilence Kingdom. So the way that goblins court their maidens, because her sister is a lady, he would have to court her as if she were a goblin. So the way that they court their ladies is they find um, someone that that their boo is jealous of and they curse them to be hideous monsters. So poor Ficus is cursed to kind of look like a bit of a gross lady, unfortunately. And it's kind of, it. it's made it so that like all of her like, boughs have been wilted and all of her um fruits are rotten as soon as they appear she's just become very rotted because she got like the pestilence curse on her um a thing that ursula didn't mention in in this is that the magic system like you can make things appear to be other stuff but but the the fairies can't control what things actually are. The only things that are set in stone are sort of ritualistic type things. Like the solstice has special magical properties and they happen at the solstice. You can't just control that. Like you can't turn someone into a frog, but you can make them look like a frog. But because this is a curse based on um, love. It is an actual physical curse. She actually is rotting. She doesn't just look like she's rotting. So she's been really depressed about this. She's not enacted revenge on her sister because she really, like, Summer is like her younger sister. I've been having a tough go of things. Ursula will get into it, but, but Ficus feels really bad for her and doesn't really want to get mad at her. She's just happy that, like, her sister's in love, even if it's with this nasty goblin. She just, like, hopes that they can stay together and be sweet. And she's, like, mad about this curse, but, you know, like, at least her sister's happy. And Ficus is mostly upset because she doesn't feel like she's gonna be able to find someone to fall in love with her, and she just really wants to get married, and no one likes her. Because she's kind of a drama queen. She's based on like a strangler fig. So like she used to like flop on top of her other sisters and just grow roots and just sit there. Like that's something like she currently likes to do. She likes to just flop on things and just grow roots and just like grow into a tree. And so that's kind of where Cedar comes in. He's her, he's her servant, her little, little manservant. And he, he's new to taking care of her. And he's, he helps her get to court because she's recently joined the Fauna Court. She's like working in the Fauna Kingdom to just as, as a member of the court. She wants to like marry, like, she wants to get married, have a, have a sweet life. She has like a little, like, um, 
manor that she lives in. She collects birds because she likes them. She thinks they're very pretty. They're kind of like flowers. And she isn't like looking at other flowers right now because she feels very upset. Um, she's always kind of been a bit upset because she f her flowers flower on the inside so no one sees them. She just always has little figs on her. But now they're all rotten so she's even more sad. And Cedar's just been like helping her like get to work because she just kind of flops around so much that she becomes very stiff and can't get up. Like sometimes all she can do is blink because she just sits there growing so many roots that she becomes very wooden. So he like stops her from doing that. Um, and I think he's like slowly becoming like more and more like friendly with her and realizing that she's like she's very like pompous but she's actually kind of a sweetie on the inside um oh and people were talking about jane jane ends up going to the fauna court to save her husband from the fairies there's a whole thing with jane like jane like ursula brushes under the rug but like jane and russell were together but like jane was like cheating on him he doesn't like immediately go for dahlia he still hasn't even gone for dahlia because he feels bad because he's still with his wife and wants to like deal with things before like moving on. Either way, Jane goes in and she becomes a red winged blackbird um, because she's in the fauna court. She's a human. No one's there to kind of help her. So she turns into a bird. She gets picked up by Cedar and brought to Ficus's aviary. And that's where she meets Tang who is a a great hornbill. They're kind of a ship. He's, he's a great guy. He's like actually a bird, but he's lived for hundreds of years, so he's not into bird things anymore. Anyways, I am going off on such a tangent here. Back to Ficus. So what's, what eventually happens with Ficus is there... A, a goblin in in the fauna court falls madly in love with her and she's totally not into him and she keeps telling him to like go away leave her alone and eventually he he takes this to mean that she's like totally into him for whatever reason and he quickly learns that she's kind of upset with her sister summer so he goes off on a quest to go curse summer yeah so summer ends up being cursed by um by this little goblin and summer's like well i'm stuck like this if i undo this curse then my sister won't accept his proposal and then i will ruin her chances at marriage because they both secretly just want they just both want each other to be happy and married even if it means that they're hideous monsters i forget what happens to to summer because I think he's like a fauna goblin, so he- I think she gets like sluggy slugs or something that eat all of her leaves, and it's very sad. And they're- they're both ugly, but they both want each other to be happy. Meanwhile, like, I, th I think that Ficus is kind of falling in love with Cedar. Cedar's cute. He's got like a crown of like, um... The, the male pine cones. He's he's a sweetums. He he doesn't take take her her trash. She's she he doesn't take no guff from her. Yeah, there's not much in a way of plot with her yet because we I really want to redo this RP like from the start at some point because I really like all the characters. We never really got all the way through it. I think we didn't even get to the point where um Summer was cursed. Yeah. But there you go. Uh, I think it's also like important to note that the older each each year the king has a new child, like for every anniversary, a new child is born and usually it's a daughter and each child becomes stronger and stronger. So Summer's like the 10th daughter and Ficus is like the 29th daughter so she's a lot more powerful than summer and just thinks of her as kind of like it, it's it's like a weird reverse thing that kind of happens where it's like the older daughters are actually more like the little sisters in a way because they're a lot weaker and and age happens very strange in the fairy world because it's a lot similar to um how the marriage thing works and how like babies are born in general um, where, where, like, um, you can only age if certain criteria are met. Like, you have to almost, like, pass a test in order to age past a certain point, and it usually takes years and years. Like, you could be a baby for, like, thousands of years if you never learn how to walk. Like, once you learn how to walk, then you're a toddler. 
it's not like after a certain amount of years you start walking and and this confuses the fairies so much when they hear about humans you know that's like half this rp is being confused about like how human stuff works because yeesh also like time is a lot slower in the fairy world so like a day in the fairy world is like months in the human world which causes a bunch of trouble for russell but i'm gonna talk about russell later because like oh my god we have like a whole bunch from this rp it's weird how like um we kind of randomized everything so like everything's in a weird position you know what i mean i don't know if you know what i mean but like now we're getting a whole bunch of like the fairy dad stuff. I think we still oh we definitely still have more from the other fairy RP. Yeah. Okay. I hope that was a good explanation. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you like, you comment, and you subscribe. I hope you check out Moonlight. I hope you give me a high five. Moonlight's the anthology that we're working on. Oh, you know what else you should check out? And like, I'm totally going to forget to add all of these links. I'm so sorry. Some of my friends are running a Kickstarter right now for an animation thing that they are doing. So if you could like toss them a few dollars, that would be cool. They would probably give you a high five. I don't know what their backer rewards are. It's like Plague Doctors and stuff doing things. So yeah, check that out. And yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I'm, I'm supposed to end this like, like Bones would, so I can't think of any good ways to end this.